So Sword Soul is a deck that I love showing off here on the channel. I think it's a great deck for any beginner Yu-Gi-Oh player, but it's also a great deck for competitive Yu-Gi-Oh players as well. And that's why I love updating this deck every single time I get the chance. And with the January 2024 ban list, I think this deck is as consistent as ever. So with that being said, I wanna show you guys how to play Sword Soul for the January 2024 format in today's video. Let's get right into it. So to start things off, we are playing three of the Incredible Ecclesia. I personally am a big believer of playing three. I know some people have cut it to two, but I think it's so powerful at three. The reason for that is because going second, she's a special summon for you, which means you don't have to commit your normal summon. So if you're baiting out in a gate or baiting out a hand trap, she becomes really powerful because then you can still continue to normal summon afterwards. On top of that, she is a level four tuner, which is really nice because that can be very beneficial in a lot of situations where you can't get a token onto your side of the field. So I really do like three of the Incredible Ecclesia. And then for the Sword Soul monsters, we are playing three moye three long one and two taie i think this is pretty standard ratios for sold soul cards i don't think you know people would change this up much at all you really need all these names because you need the worms for a lot of their effects for long one for moye and then for taie specifically the reason we're playing two and not three is because taie does require a little bit of setup whereas these ones kind of get you your play started right so that's why we're only playing the two taie and then of course we are playing three emergence as well as one sword soul blackout i really considered playing two blackout but i only chose to play one because you don't play desires anymore in this deck so spoiler alert and that's because the ban list provided some other form of consistency for this deck which is really nice and on top of that blackout when it's banished can get you an extra token onto your side of the field which is really powerful as well so that's it for the source soul names i don't think you should be playing any more than these i don't like playing the uh, monster reborn one i just think it's kind of a break it does require setup and it's more just of a win more card which i really didn't like i wanted to make this deck as consistent as possible i didn't really want to win more because if this deck does what it wants to do you're winning the game anyway moving on to the 10 e stuff we are playing three of the ashuna three of the vishuda three of the adhara as well as one chathana now i think these are the best ratios to be playing because i found that you really need the worm monsters for a lot of your effects right now of course you guys might be thinking okay obviously you need the worm monsters but i found in testing a lot of the time and just through my history of playing this deck is that if you have like a sword soul name and you don't have a worm like your your, your deck's kind of dead it doesn't really do anything unfortunately you do need two cards for all of these combos to go off specifically because you need the extra worm but the really nice thing about the 10 e monsters is that vishuda itself is a board breaker for you so that's really nice going second as well you kind of have like an in archetype board breaker which is really nice and of course these are also extenders for you we're also playing two heavenly dragon circle now heavenly dragon circle is really nice because it does let you dodge a lot of hand trap for both your tangy monsters as well as your sword soul monsters which is really nice so i do like playing the two of these i think the quick play is very important and it does a lot of different things for you also if you do tribute a non-effect monster aka a token or one of your link one monk of the tangies then you can special summon the worm monster instead right which is why heavenly dragon circle is really nice and then the other effect in the graveyard is if you control a non-effect monster you can banish this to add a 10 e card from your deck to your hand and then of course adding your 10 e's here is really powerful as well so two heavenly dragon circle i think is the perfect ratio moving on to the rest of the deck we are playing three ash three imperm and three droplets i chose to play these as my hand trap slash board breakers i think droplets is just so important in today's format and it works really well in this deck it's one of those things where when you're halving your opponent's attack not only are you negating and breaking their board but when you're halving their attack it becomes really powerful because you're able to otk this deck can put up a lot of damage and with droplet you're able to otk a lot of the time and then i will say the really nice thing that i like about droplet is you do want to go first so going first you can always set this card which is really powerful there are situations where let's say your opponent commits to like two or three monsters i'll just give you that as an example right and you have droplet set and let's say you have a blackout set you can flip blackout to tribute a card pop two but then you can flip droplet and then you can send the blackout and then negate a third card potentially right there's just situations like that that come up and that becomes really powerful as well this could be any other hand trap you guys can you know play instead if you don't want to play the droplets but i just think droplet is so powerful and that's why i like playing the three forbidden droplet lastly i'm playing one call by the grave and then because we want to play 37 cards we're playing three upstart goblin the january ban list gave us upstart goblin back and there's no reason to not play upstart goblin in this deck being able to draw extra cards playing 37 card deck which is a deck this by the way is already consistent so having that more consistency or being able to draw into your hand trap slash droplet can be really powerful as well right so i'm not playing veiler i don't think veiler is that good like i just never wanted to play a card where if i drew it going second as a sixth card it was dead and that's my thing with veiler right veiler is a very powerful card yes but in the situation where let's say i draw imprim as my sixth card cool it's a board breaker i draw droplet as my sixth card cool it's a board breaker i know ash is not great as a sixth card either but ash is just so generic that it can be used a lot of time on your turn as well if your opponent is activating some of your effects right so that's why i like playing these cards and this rounds off the deck it's a 40 card deck but 37 cards with upstart now at three 
For the extra deck, it's pretty standard. We're playing two Shishao, one of the Cheng Ying, and one of the Sinister Long One. I think these are pretty standard source soul ratios. If I'm being honest with you, I don't think I would change these up. Just two of the eights and two of the tens, very powerful. We're playing two Boxia as well as one Chao Fang. I'm not playing Yazi. I do not personally like Yazi at all, especially because I'm not playing Destrudo. And without playing Destrudo, it's actually hard to make level sevens in this deck. The only way you guys can make it is if you banish an emergence to level modulate. But then I don't know. I just personally don't like that. I feel like it's too janky. I'd rather just play two Baxia, help you go second in OTK or break boards, and then Chao Fang as well is really nice. And then we're playing, of course, the one Baron, standard in Sword Soul, one Draco Berserker, and for my tech card, I'm playing one Savage Dragon. Now, you guys might be wondering, okay, but you're not playing that many Link Monsters. It's true. However, a lot of the times, if you're able to end on the Savage Dragon, it does put up that negate for you that otherwise this deck might not have, especially when you're able to make the second level eight Synchro. And that's why I just really like the Savage Dragon, because the Savage Dragon targets are either your Shaman or your three Monk of the Tenny, right? Even if you're just putting a single Monk on the Tenny of the Savage, it's still a negate. It still becomes a beater for you because it's gaining half the attack, which is really nice. So that's why I do like the Savage Dragon. Again, it's a card that you don't go into super often, but it is my little tech. I used to play Crimson Blader here, but instead of Crimson Blader, I'm actually opting to play Savage Dragon because I just feel like Savage Dragon is just a little bit better right now, right? So that's why we're playing the Savage Dragon. And then this is only 14 cards. I have one more card left here and I don't have it on me, guys. I apologize. But the best card to be playing is sp little knight i don't have an sp little knight but i would heavily suggest playing an sp little knight it's so powerful in this deck and it's just such a powerful card in general that i would be playing it now if you guys don't have an sp little knight this can be anything this can be an ip if you guys want to play an ip here this can be another synchro monster if it's a level 10 or a level 8 synchro monster it could be the yazi if you guys want it to be this is the 15th card that's kind of really up to you whatever you guys want to be playing in this case i think sp is the best card to play but if you guys don't have sp that's okay too you guys can play something else here in instead. Lastly, for the side deck, guys, keep in mind, side deck is always going to be up to personal preference, depending on what your locals is like. But I want to show you guys a little skeleton that you guys can use. So two Panker Tops, of course, this card being back at two is absolutely insane. So I do like playing two Pank, one Harpies and two Lightning Storm. Very powerful cards for back row matchups. Three Evenly Match. Evenly Match is really nice as well for a lot of the back row matchups, but it's also really good into today's metagame in general, into decks like Rescue Ace, Fire King and all those different decks. You know, Evenly Match can be very powerful. Labyrinth as well. This is really powerful. One Rivalry. This card now is at one, but I would still play the one because if you guys didn't notice everything in the main deck is pretty much a worm and if you're able to end on rivalry especially with three upstar goblin so we're playing the one rivalry three anti-spell 100 i think this is the best side deck card of the format and you guys can see we're not playing that many spell cards outside of our emergence really that gets our combos going on top of that if you're going first anyways you're going to do all your combo stuff before you activate the anti-spell anyway so i really really like three anti-spell and then lastly three solemn judgment i really like citing this when i know i'm going first into games two or games three because having this means that you have that extra layer of disruption to protect the boards that you make so that's it for the side deck keep in mind it's just a skeleton for you guys to use it's not something you guys have to play this exact side deck if your locals is a lot of combo players make sure you side for combo if your locals is a lot of back row make sure you side for back row this is just something you guys can use as a guideline for your side deck so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Sword Soul for the January 2024 format. With the addition of Upstart Goblin, you guys are able to essentially run through your deck as fast as possible. And then the deck itself with the Tenyes and the Sword Soul monsters is super consistent on its own. It can break boards, it can make boards, it does a little bit of everything. Now, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload every single day here in the month of December. And now while December is almost over, you guys might have missed all the uploads from the month. Make sure you guys subscribe check in all of that and then we got a few more days left so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that spanko signing out peace